The Bad Crypto Podcast is brought to you by Bad Coin, a cryptocurrency that anyone can mine with any computer. In fact, the older your computer, the better chance you have of getting rewards. Find out more today at www.badcoin.net. It's rare that we welcome a guest back to the show just a few months after an initial appearance, but Samson Williams wowed us so much the first time around that he got an immediate come back and see us sometime before the first interview was even over. And today, he's back to share his wisdom and insights on healthcare, artificial intelligence, drone racing, privacy, the Super Bowl, and the future of crypto. Also, to commemorate this episode, we've got another collectible NFT featuring our guest. So you'll want to listen in and discover how you can claim yours because it's only going to be available for a short time. It's just gone eight o'clock and time for the penguin on top of your television set to explode just in time for episode number 367 of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Five, four, three, two, one. Who's bad? And welcome to the Bad Crypto Podcast, where I can see Mr. Travis Wright smoking a doobie. It's not true. <laughs> I just saw it. You saw a smoke happen. I saw, a doobie. I saw you You're out of the loop. something. You're out of the loop. Was that a bong or what? What did you do? It was not. It was a medical raid. Ah, uh, there you go. The Bad Crypto Podcast. Travis is going to be in rare form. He's there. I'm Joel Com here, and we have got a fantastic flipping show for you. You're not going to want to move. Don't even breathe. Just hold your breath. Or just hold it in. Just hold it in. I got a question. What the hell did you talk about? Is it with a penguin on your television? What does that even reference? What does that mean? You don't even know. You no don't. If that is a Monty Python's Flying Circus reference oh. from a classic skit. See, others out there are right now that know what I just said. They're going, oh, Travis. Mm. What are you, millennial, Travis? I mean... I am I am uh, almost a decade younger than you, so you have do you do have some references that I don't know. You know what's really funny is I'm a last year boomer. I was born in 1964, and I just I don't feel like a boomer. I barely feel like Gen X. I feel yeah. so much younger. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what I feel like. I feel like telling you that there's some really interesting stuff coming up in this episode. Samson is once again going to blow you away. We are going to announce how to obtain the commemorative NFT, the non-fungible token for the show that you're not going to want to miss. We had so many people claim the last one Mm -hmm. from our episode with Peter McCormick. It's gone, gone, gone. That's true. Well over 100 people claimed that, and they figured it out the first time. 200. Yeah, 200 people claimed that first one, figuring it out, which was actually our second official one. We did do one test one at at the Washington Elite event just to kind of make sure we had the process down. So that's that's zero, zero, zero. There are only 11 of those in existence. And then we had 50 in existence for the NFT, uh, the, the BTC Miami event, North American Bitcoin Conference. People still trying to figure it out, man. Even people who are in the cryptos are like, "Well, how? It's interesting. What does it do? How does it work?" And uh, dude, we're on the front. We're on the front lines here, testing out new technology for y'all, so we can have some fun stuff to do. And the penguin on top of your television set's about to explode. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Travis Wright is going to give a shout out to our first sponsor. And by the way, guys, without our sponsors, this show isn't made possible. It's impossible. That's true. Not, it's not possible. So, you know, get, when we talk about our sponsors, please give a listen, see if something we're talking about resonates with you and go visit their site because that lets them know, hey, you know, we care about the Republic of yeah. Bad Cryptopia. We are bringing on crap projects to talk about. We're talking about really cool, innovative ones. Like if they're a sponsor that we're shouting out, that's because they're doing cool stuff. So Moby, you know, if you talk about money and I'm actually working on a presentation called Funny Money which is all about the past, present, and future of money. And like it's exi- money's existed for thousands of years in an exchange of value, right? Like even, even before money happens, like I will give you four chickens for your baby goat, right? I mean, that, that's, I will that's, take that offer. That would happen. I mean, what's so even, even so crazy to think about is that even up to 50 years ago in a lot of places, like, you know, like, if you wanted to marry somebody, you had to give the dad a dowry of like some goats and some cows or give me some gold coins and you don't even get to choose who you wanted to marry. Like the world has evolved, folks. It's crazy. 
And uh, so Mo- Moby Pay is really interesting because y- you don't have to worry about shells. You don't have to worry about precious metals or minted coins or paper money. The, the process of transferring money now is massively super fast, super quick. They've gone mobile. That's why there's the Moby Pay ecosystem. And it has three core applications. It allows you to spend, send digital currency from your mobile phone in seconds. And also it works with merchants where merchants have, it has this cashback program and an integrated reward and payment token system. And so far what we've learned is everyone that's been presented this, if they're like a major retailer, like they they really love it because – Instead of actually having to take credit card fees and being charged these two or three percent on those those different transactions, they're able. Moby's actually able to create a gift card on the fly for that exact amount of that transaction. So that way, that balance goes immediately into the retailer's pocket. They don't have to wait. So it's a really cool process. I think they're the only ones that's doing that. So check it out. It's Moby Pay M O B I E Pay P A Y dot I O. And to keep an eye on them, folks, because they could be the, one of the companies that help bring in that mass adoption. And now the interview that you've been waiting for, Get Ready Gang, is Professor Samson Williams. We have interviewed hundreds of people on this show, but it is very rare that a guest gets invited back a second time. And it's not because they're not good. I want, Most to, of I want them to say are. something. I've been on, the, I've been on that <laughs> crypto seven times. Don't forget about me, Ronnie Moast. <laughs> no, we will not forget about you. How could we, Ronnie? We we dig you, Ronnie. Oh, snap. Um, <laughs> it, but it's not because our guests aren't great. It's, it's because there's so many people to talk to. But every now and then, somebody comes along with so much great content. And we're like, oh, we're so sorry this interview has to end. Will you come back again? And such is the case with Professor Samson Williams, the principal of Axes and Eggs. They're a think tank and a digital advisor based in Washington, D.C. Um, Travis, do you remember the episode number that he was on previously? I think it was last October. Yeah, thanks for just throwing that on me. <laughs> episode number episode number Samson. Anyway, he's here and more awesome content is coming your way. We can feel it. Samson Williams, welcome back to the Republic of Bad Cryptopia. Hey, glad to get glad to be invited back to the Republic of Bad Cryptopia. I'm gonna, I'm working on getting my uh, passport stamp from you guys, so we'll have to figure that out. Episode three twenty three, Mister Joelcom. There you go. Before we dive into some of the topics we've got here in our show notes, I just want to know what you're into right now, Samson. Like, what's really got your attention in the blockchain world? Uh, in the blockchain world, I guess it's esports and e gaming and tokens and wallets. So, but I know we're going to talk about that uh, later down the line. So why, why, don't, why don't we just start there? I mean, I asked the question, you got the answer. What is fascinating you in the esports world? Uh, so what's fascinating me in my in the esports world is this my summer planning for my nieces and nephews. And so I, during the summers, I try to send them places. And so football just has too many injuries. Uh, no one wants none of them want to play baseball. And so they asked about drone racing. So I was like, I'll find you a drone racing camp. Fair enough. But as part of that, it's when you're when I'm looking at where my nieces, they, my niece and nephews, they range from three years old to 16 years old. Uh, what are they what are they interested in? And so I see a, I can sense a decline in, you know, physical sports like baseball and football. And they're moving toward their sports as a thing are transitioning to esports or e-gaming. And so when I looked a little bit further into this, I was like, hmm, where's the money going to be at in the next decade? And in the next ga- de- de- decade of esports and e-gaming, it's actually the girls. The women are going to dominate esports and e-gaming, uh, particularly when you when you look at um, drone racing versus NASCAR. So NASCAR is one of those other sports that's on its way out. Uh, not that people don't love watching cars go around in a circle for four to five hours, but it's got a super high barrier to entry for just normal human beings. Whereas drone racing, it costs a couple hundred bucks. Um, it costs even less if it's just like a starter drone just to you know buzz around your park. And so when we're looking at that hockey stick growth, it's e-games, e-sports, and drone racing. I'm putting drone racing in with, as an e-sport. It's going to be the growth market, primarily driven by young girls and women getting into the getting into that quote unquote sports category. I think it's the last decade between Serena Williams, Simone Biles, the U.S. women's soccer team. Uh, women have just been dominating in sports 
so much and they tell such a great and compelling story. And so I know when I do have kids, the universe is going to bless me with daughters for my stellar behavior as a young man. And so it's like, <laughs> oh man, what am I going to do to situate them so that they can, you know, and have a sense of community, be engaged with their peers and their peers, they're all going online. I think uh, like one of the big deals was uh, the Fortnite championship a couple months ago. Uh, the kid, he's like 16, he won three or $6 million. But the thing that levels the field when it comes to esports is that the eye-hand coordination, the patience, the dexterity required to dominate an esport game across the field, girls are going to win. They're more patient. They make better decisions. The girls are going to dominate esports. And when we look at that hockey stick growth, on one hand, from just hey, I should be investing in these things, and the other hand is hey, I should get, I should uh, step up my awareness of this industry. I think that the untapped market or the underserved market is women in esports. And to bring it back, because we need to talk about blockchains and cryptos, um, if you have an esports platform and you have a token or a cryptocurrency in it, uh, there's this great guidance. That, well, I call it great guidance, but uh, FinCEN, which stands for the Financial uh, Crimes Enforcement Network, on May 9th, 2019, they sent out some guidance. It's entitled, uh, the subject is application of FinCEN's regulations to certain business models involving convertible virtual currencies. That's that's what they call it. But you want to go down a section, uh, it's 4.2.1, and it goes into the nitty gritty, I'm sorry, 4.2.1 that talks about hosted and unhosted wallet providers. And so this is the tidbit that you're actually waiting for if you have a crypto or a token as part of your esports or e-gaming platform. Uh, section 4.2.1, it's on page 15. I'll make sure I send you guys a link so you can post it as part of this chat. If you're a hosted or unhost unhosted wallet provider, you're going to need a money transmitter license. And I'm going to say this because this is going to cost you 250k to get and then another 250k to maintain what? you're good i'm not a lawyer it's just how much the lawyers are going to charge you you're going to need a money transmitter license that's fincen guidance and again they're the financial crimes folks everyone actually knows what a money transmitter license is because in the state of new york uh last week bitrix got kicked out of new york um, because mm -hmm. they couldn't get a bit license so in New York, if you're in the Southern District of New York, you go to apply for a money transmitter license. They call that a bit license. So it, again, each jurisdiction, whether you're in New York or in D.C. or California, has a different licensing requirement for your um, money transmitter license. So if you have a game, an esports game, and you people are playing it in 50 states, you need 50 different licenses. There's not like how, how big of a pain in the ass is that? Pretty big. You're, oh, I mean, lawyers love it. They're like, hey, you have clients in 50 states because you're an esports platform. Congratulations. If you have a token or a crypto as part of that platform, you're going to need a money transmitter license. On one hand, you'll have people who like, no, ignore it and take the risk. Then on the other hand, you have people like, oh, we do actually need this license. Let's evaluate this. That's yes for cryptos and tokens. Of course, with virtual bucks or virtual cash, I see our in-game um, currencies. There is a developing regulatory space that those guys will also need some kind of money transmitter license or some type of regulation because more and more people are taking the in-game currencies and using them in real life. And so when you have that, when you have that conversion from a virtual currency or a digital currency into a real world application, they're going to get hit with money transmitter license. Yeah, it's not very sexy. It's just compliance and, reg and regulatory arbitrage, um, but that's going to happen. So I'm very interested in esports because I do think it's going to be the sector that grows the most, uh, driven by engagement of young girls. But I also think that when it comes to cryptocurrencies and tokens, if you've got a niece, a nephew, or a kid, you've probably, they've gotten your credit card and they bought themselves some V-Bucks at some point for some game. And the next hot game that comes out, oh, can I mention a game I played recently that uh, uses these? Yeah. Uh, it's called Air Coins. And so yeah. 
Yeah, uh, I've been I've been playing with their coins as well. I love it. Yeah, it's like I it's like Pokemon Go meets collecting cryptocurrencies, right? I, right. So. In fact, we've been trying to get a hold of those guys, and and uh, I guess they're they're deep in development and don't have time to talk right now. So, Carl, if you're listening, <laughs> just get a shout out, dude. Let's do this. Yeah, so I I love the air coins. When I'm walking around, I'm constantly playing. I'm, I'm playing with it because it literally I pull it out. It's uh, AR versus a, it's it's augmented reality cryptocurrencies. I'm collecting the different air coins and the other different tokens, and so that's technically an exercise app because you've got to actually get out and walk to collect everything well that's not entirely true because sometimes i'll play when i'm in the back seat of an uber and like if you want to pick them up really fast do it when you're a passenger in a car because you're like oh there there there's, 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 there's one, one right one. here in my house right now i'm just collecting it right now clicking yeah <laughs> boom so I kind of- oh man you know that's, <laughs> I, i'm so familiar with the sound because it's such a distinct yeah. sound and so um i'm hustle fun baby i'm like not ranked anywhere in there, but I'm working on bringing up my ranking. Um, and so there's going to be some hot games like air coins. Um, air X is their token. I think they have a total market cap of like five or 600 bucks at the moment, but right. they have a product that works. Um, you can play it. And so, you know, whenever you can kick the tires on a product, it's that MVP works. You get the sense of how it feels. Um, maybe it'll be the next hot game. Maybe it won't, but it's out there. And so you have all these games that are out there that don't know because gamers aren't really familiar that hey we're gonna spend more on our legal than we are on some aspect of our development so that's what i'm most interested in for the blockchain slash cryptocurrency slash token space at the moment yeah i just looked them up they have market cap question mark on coin gecko that's (laughs) (laughs) bad coin has a bigger market cap than than air coins uh, but Aircoins deserves it. I mean, it's it's a cool app. Oh, yeah. It is super cool app, and I'm looking for that. And so when you see Aircoins, you get the idea of, hey, this is a game. Uh, Joel is cheating by playing it in an Uber, which I'm going to – I'm literally going to get off this call and go get in an Uber and just drive around. <laughs> <laughs> it's not che- who said it's cheating. Hey, you're improvising the game. I get it. The leader. Dude, I'll like- take it. I'll take it a step further. I do it on airplanes. So as you're dry, you know, taxiing around the tarmac, you uh-huh. get to them fast. And I wanted to see if I could actually get them in the air. Cause you know, your cell coverage will hang out for a little bit. And so I've actually claimed air coins in the oh air. Oh my gosh. You're such an innovator. <laughs> So good. You need to turn off your phone on takeoff, man. You gotta turn your yeah. phone off. That's well, my gotta be by the rules. Yeah, there's rules and regulation, Mr. Joel Com, and you having your phone mm-hmm. not in airplane mode is is not the FinCEN's gonna get you. I don't like that. That's <laughs> right. That's right. And I will say that I love Aircoin because their geolocation is really accurate. You need to be within 80 feet of a coin in order to sense it, and it's really accurate. And so I'll have to do. I have to pull a Joel and try it around the airport and and, <laughs> oh, and, and oh, taxi. Another but... one in my house. <laughs> get it. it, get it. Oh, that was uh, great! It was job. a TRV. It was a TRV, and I'm Travis, and I just got it. That's nice. <laughs> That's a travel point. It's, tra- it's a Trav. It's a Trav dog. Good stuff, Travis. Good point. stuff. Yeah. And so, for all those people listening, if if they go try out the Aircoin, they can see where if you're thinking about developing a game. In the crypto space, that's crypto friendly or crypto focused. That that is at a minimum where you should be at, because no one else is going to want to invest in your platform or you know advocate for your coin if they can't physically kick the tires, use your game. So I'm really excited about what comes next when these games, these esports, have wallets with QR codes where you can buy, sell, and exchange them um, in real time. Um, particularly when they, I think they're going to roll out uh, some skins um, and different uh, avatar features. And so that that space is over the next decade is going to bust wide open because Travis made this joke about Samson San Diego. But when we're in the world as Carmen San Diego integrates air coins as part of their ensemble, as part of their offering, bananas. That game's going to just reignite and go bananas. And those girls from five years old to 12 are going to be dominating 
uh, where in the world is Carmen San Diego with the collect your coin integration app. It's going to be mm-hmm. crazy. Nice. Now, you know, I, I love your, I love the thought process on that is, you know, saying that this next decade, the 2020 decade is, is the white decade of women in esports. That's going to be interesting. One thing is that I think, but at least for the next 10 years, the NFL is still going to be pretty good because it has Patrick Mahomes. So that's good. And that's my team and they're going to Super Bowl. And so that's good. So hopefully my, Oh man, I got bad news oh, for yeah, you. What's that? It's the 49ers, Uh-oh. man. The, the 49ers were 4-12 and 12 last year, man. They don't deserve to be here. They lost, they lost 10 games <laughs> in the last four years each. Hard work, persistence. Yeah. The 49ers uh, you got know. it, man. I like Patrick Mahomes, too. It, ho- hopefully you're incorrect. Also, it's always interesting to me, it's just, and it's maybe even a little controversial, but it's like, you know, women have not really, you know, dominated in physical sports. You know, at least in, in, the in you know, there's some that we're going out. But what's so weird to me now is like how it's totally cool for, um, you know, women who used to be men to now dominate women's sports. That just seems bad to me. It's like such a weird thing in society now. It's like, you know, I think esports is going to be a perfect realm because, you know, you get to use your mind and your dexterity and there's that's even playing ground. You know what I mean? It's kind of crazy. Uh, it's a. Yeah, it's an even playing ground. And the other interesting aspect, uh, uh, Dimwitty, uh, the the gentleman from the New Jersey Nets who tokenized mm-hmm. his contract mm-hmm. recently. So uh, the WNBA, they recently announced a new collective bargaining agreement. This is January 2020. They announced this. And so you'll have women sports players who want to go pro who will follow the Dimwitty model of hey, over the next X amount of years, I have the potential to make I think Dimwitty is making he slated to make thirteen million, and he put up uh, three or six million as part of his token offering. And so you'll see a, an influx of cash coming into women's sports because their fans are going to be able to buy their tokens that represent yeah, some um, uh, revenue for them. And so now it's crowdfunding one hundred and one. You're you're a fan of Simone Biles, and you want to support her, or you want to support your favorite Olympian, and so they're selling off a portion of their future earnings and so this is where that's not necessarily esports or e-gaming but it's still where you're taking blockchain as a mm-hmm. technology applying it to uh in this instance some tokenizing of your smart earnings. contract yeah i know actually i think tokenizing yeah ken earnings. bosak with a crypto guy he said he's going to be doing that he's going to be he's working with someone to he's going to tokenize his future earnings and people he's going to totally put himself on the blockchain like that in a transparent manner which i thought which he had that conversation there in Miami, which I think is kind of interesting. He's he's always token. Nice. He's always he's always testing that stuff. But this is what's what's so crazy is is to think about like like what happens in that particular scenario if somebody like Dimwitty, you know, it's like what if he doesn't end up making that money? What happens if he ends up getting hurt? He doesn't end up making that money, and or what happens if 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 people are like, hey, I'm a doctor and I'm trying to go to law, I'm going to try to go to medical school. And I'm going to be a doctor and I'm going to tokenize my future earnings. And then they don't become a doctor. Is it like, how does the, the, the will that d- default? Was Will they end up having to go into some sort of indentured servitude type of a thing or something where you're not earning <laughs> your money? You said you're going to earn. Now the, now the, the token mob boss is going to come over. And I mean, it's just, it's going to create a weird scenario. I think if, if more and more people are, are tokenizing their future earnings. I think that's where we're just headed in general, where you're tokenizing your future earnings, but it's also going to give some some underdogs. Like if you knew that Sylvester Stallone, when he went to make Rocky, uh, the original yep. movie, if you're like he never made a movie before, he's just a boxer, you know, he's this Italian guy. But I like mm-hmm. his story. If you knew that, hey, I could not only buy a ticket, but also, you know, uh, invest 500 bucks in that future. It's it's going to give people who otherwise these underdogs mm-hmm. who otherwise would not, not have a chance an opportunity. Yeah, now, there's some of those there's some of those and like think- soccer players that are coming up and then like 13 and 14 and you just kind of know they're going to be huge. Like Bryce Harper in in Major League Baseball, he was 15 and 16. He was crunching 500 you know feet home runs, and I was like, damn, this dude's yeah. going to be good. Like I would totally have bought some stock in some Bryce Harper because I remember when he was 16 a couple years or before he got drafted, and I was like, this kid right here has potential to just be a baller and i would have totally invested in him but you you can't you can't do that right now maybe we get to the point where we're going to be able to do some of that stuff that'll be fun 
Yes. Yeah, and, and when you brought up your question of what happens if they don't achieve, well, you know, it is investment. Investments come with loss. Anybody who was messing around with ICOs in 2017, 18 knows that very well. Relationship or marriage, you won. I know so many people who were like, oh, man, I'm getting divorced. I'm like, I told you not to buy that shit going. But um uh, the Winkle boss just they have a new insurance company as part of their platform. And so maybe in the future, you will also be able to buy some insurance um, to hedge your to hedge your losses if your uh, tokenized uh, revenue doesn't come through in the future. Again, this is a brave new field where innovation and creativity is going to push it so that you might have a eight-year-old who's the eight-year-old who makes a uh, 20-odd million dollars on YouTube, you'd be like, I want to invest in you. I want to see if this, if you could do that again. Um, so yeah, we're on a brave new world when it comes to esports and just tokenizing assets or tokenizing revenue streams. So eventually we'll see websites that allow you to invest in, you know, in people essentially is what you're saying, right? You know, just like right now we've got, um, you know, sites that we can go and look at investments we can make there. You will start be able to pick TikTokers and YouTubers and athletes and musicians. So, yeah, you, you, you've nailed it. Um, these are all covered in some version under the Jobs Act, Jumpstart Our Businesses jumpstart our businesses and startups act uh under crowdfunding in this instance it'd be some variation of uh, rather it's all investment crowdfunding because you're making an investment um you're not doing donation or rewards you're making an investment and so you're looking at equity debt or royalty or revenue and i wrote an article it's somewhere out there in the world it's called um google's kyc policy how google kyc policy will transform uh, uh equity crowdfunding uh, so Google and Amazon, they know their customers. So KYC stands for know your customer checks. So Google and Amazon knows their customer. So if Joel or Travis wants to go raise money uh, on uh, Amazon's equity crowdfunding platform, Amazon, they know everything about you. It's like, don't worry, literally just send us a photo. We can use Clearview AI, which is super predatory. We'll talk about that later. We can use Clearview AI to say, here's where you're at. Here's where you live. Here's everyone you've ever known. And so when people will be able to come in and see what is your offering. And so this is where the future of Jobs Act investment crowdfunding will come into play, because, again, it will give people the opportunity to make investments into their friends, neighbors and uh, people they support, their fans. And I think that that is really going to change not only esports, but the music industry as a whole, where. Uh, Old Town Road goes from SoundCloud to, you know, the cosmos driven strictly by fan engagement. And this is going to be very disruptive. But I think this is where blockchain and tokenizing uh, revenues or tokenizing opportunities will really come into play in the future. Yeah, it's really interesting. That's it's it, it's such a it, as you said, it's such a whole new world when we're doing stuff like this. And it's one part of the innovation of crypto and just technology driven society that we're in right there's just so many interesting things that can that can happen on this now you, you have this interesting quote you said everyone is a libertarian and an anarchist until they need health care <laughs> yeah and so then we're like man i'm sick i need i need some i need some help what are, what are your what are your thoughts on that what do you what do you necessarily mean by that um well that just plays it you know everyone wants to do their own thing um i wrote an article entitled decentralization loses to teamwork so Joel and Travis, you're a great one-two punch, right? You're hilarious, you're witty, but you also push a great message. You do the Lord's work in educating the masses. That's why I tell people all the time, God, listen to that. Amen. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Preach it. <laughs> and so you guys work as a team, and then you have your team that's behind the team, because you know you're you're just the eye. Teamwork candy, makes a dream right? work, Travis baby. Travis is just the eye kind of. Teamwork makes a dream work. But in the decentralized space, we don't focus on teamwork like we should. It's like, no, it's decentralized. Everybody's running around, not communicating, not coordinating, not calling out plays. Like if you're a quarterback, if you were the quarterback on a decentralized team, whoever is your left tackle is off in la-la land. And you're getting sacked every down. Not Patrick right? Mahomes. You have the not shortest Patrick career. <laughs> you have one of the shortest careers other than Patrick <laughs> Mahomes who 
has an excellent when Patrick Mahomes calls an audible, he's he's such a great communicator and he has field savvy. So he marshals his team. And so when we talk about, you know, everybody is a libertarian until they want health insurance. Part of that is how are we coming together to coordinate policy decisions? And so that's a that can be like, oh, no, we don't want to talk about policy because it's more po- politics and regulations. But when we're just talking about the innovation and uh, blockchain and cryptos and tokenizing revenue streams, those are what will enable that is technology, but also policy changes. And so everybody wants to do their wants to live their own dream until they realize in order to build and execute that you need a community. You need to be part of a team. So I'm on bad. I'm on team bad crypto all the time. Why? Because you guys are doing the Lord's work. You're educating people in an entertaining way. And so everyone else, until they realize that, hey, individually, uh, I think, uh, what is this? Muhammad Ali has the shortest poem in the uh, Guinness Book of World Records. Me, we. Mm -hmm. And so right now we're focused on the me part and not the we part. And to actually see mass adoption, mass adoption means there is some centralization because that means they have a person or an entity who has the vision and the passion and who is driving that vision and the passion so that everyone can benefit from blockchain technology. Because for me personally, I am so excited about crowdfunding, tokenization, where the little man, Main Street, can fund their own businesses, can fund their own dreams. For me, that is where the real value of the revolution happens. Because again, it's the community, your community, helping people uh, grow. Everybody's a fan of Rocky, and now Rocky can bring that community along. Yeah, but with how them. does that work when you got no when you got FinCEN and these other guys in the SEC, and you know it's like crowdfunding in some ways is is great, but in other ways, like they're they're shutting down. They just even re- recently announced a warning for IEOs, those initial exchange offerings. Like, be careful with those. So it's like, yeah, do crowdfunding, but don't be innovated with any of those digital assets because those, you know, the, we're going to be very, we're, we're going to scrutinize those tremendously. And, and then innovation leaves America and doesn't hit, it doesn't hit Main Street. It seems like it's what's happening. Yeah, no, that's that, you know, you don't want to have too many regulations, but that's where part of it, why I'm always in D.C. talking to regulators, it's to help them be at ease and comfortable with, here's what's happening in the world of innovation. Here's what we can do to stay ahead of this. And we, at America as a whole, we want to set the standards for the world. We can't set the standards for the world if we're not accustomed or inclined to change. And so humans, we, we love revolution. We just hate change. And so 99% of my time with on regulators in the heel is just helping them understand this is what blockchain is. These are what cryptocurrencies are. There's some existing framework. We can do this. Uh, here's how people are innovating so that they don't say, oh, we're just going to ban it. Uh, India wrote a really bad reason for why they're banning cryptocurrencies. This cap, this came out like two days ago. I'll find it and send it to you guys. Um, but sometimes regulations are helpful. Uh, this morning, Maureen sent me a thing from the Securities and Exchange Commission where it says the SEC files charges against a scheme to sell fictitious interest in a marijuana company. Um, again, they sent out this uh, release today. And it's about renewable trade, tr- uh, renewable technology solutions, uh, who are, who uh, raised one point eight million dollars for their fake cannabis uh, oh, securities. So it's like I've got, a, I got a great plot for you on the moon. Here, let me sell you a piece of the moon. Oh man, <laughs> so that's even where you can put your your Lambo's. Gonna that's even worse than bad weed when it's fake weed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I'm a I'm a fan of the cannabis industry. And so it's like, oh, you guys, stop running Ponzi schemes in the cannabis industry. You're slowing down regulations across the board. <laughs> you know, you said that we are uh, educating in an entertain entertaining kind of way. I like to look at it as we're entertaining in an educational kind of way, right? That that we're just a couple clowns talking crypto and oh, by the way, you might learn something. And this kind of brings us to the the bigger subject of education. You know, when we talk, uh, we just came back from Miami recently. We were at two crypto conferences there. We go to a lot of different conferences. There's a lot of trade shows going on. There's training programs. And these are all so important, not just for the community, but also for education. So maybe give us a glimpse into what you see as the future 
of the crypto industry via these events? Uh, so one of the things that you'll see is you'll have master classes, meaning in the morning or uh, before the session starts, you're going to get probably an hour, an hour and a half to two hours uh, on a specific subject. Meaning, uh, what are the tax implications between proof of work versus proof of stake mining? Which is going to be an hour, hour and a half on on that topic. Period. Um, because if you're in the mining, if you're a miner, you actually want to know what the difference is because you you don't want to be in a love affair with the IRS. And so you'll have specific master classes where I don't want to go to the conference for the whole day. I want to pop in and I want to learn about a very specific topic, uh, but I want to learn about it in a way that I might sit down with a piece of paper that has an overview um, to say that, hey, today we're going to talk about uh, what are DAOs and how and how you form them. So it's like, oh, okay, I want to actually know that. And so you'll see the conferences, they'll still have the interactions and the networking, but you're going to go and treat it more on the business side of things because as people mature and they're looking at to how they scale out their projects, it's my team needs to know this very specific educational component so that we can take that education back, plug it into our system and, and scale our project. So I think that's the biggest thing, master classes. The other thing I think you'll see is where more conferences will be live streamed. Like when a uh, bad crypto goes somewhere, you're always making up great content. You're always on stage and you're live streaming on stage. And I love it. I saw when I met you guys in the, uh, Philadelphia. And so you'll see people who tune in to see who are the speakers, what topics are they talking about? Because often we have these great conversations, but they happen in silos. And so you'll see conferences say, yes, come in person. Humans love to sniff each other's butts. You know, we're just hairless apes. We're like dogs. We love to sniff each other's too. We like those. <laughs> yeah, but we'll see where it's like, I'm going to this master class to learn this very specific thing, or I'm going to tune in uh, on this webcast again, to learn this very specific thing. But if you're not learning, if you're not educating me, I'm not going to tune in. I'm not going to attend. And just to get back to Joel's question with the future of education, you're going to, particularly in the blockchain space, you're going to see more programs that issue CLEs, continuing uh, educational credits, as well as micro credits. And someone's going to figure out how to integrate uh, a blockchain record that you have watched X number of YouTube videos or passed this a certain test so that you can take that proof of learning with you wherever you go to show that, hey, I've listened to uh, all episodes of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Ooh, I results. like that. Bad certification. I mean, you might get a bad certification because you, all you have to do is put like a test at the end to ask them three questions like, what do we talk about? Now that you're able to verify that, hey, they listen to the content, because again, you guys, I call you guys an educational show. You're an entertainment show that does education. We're going to see where education, the tools and the skills that people have to get the advanced job jobs, they're not going to be teaching them in school. Because even now, when you when you look at uh, Why don't we do this? Let's let's just do this. Samson, you could lead it up um, and we can bring in the educators and let's provide a certification. Let's be the first ones to market uh, and having a professor kind of lead the way and partner with us on this. We could actually do something groundbreaking. I'm writing myself a note so I can figure out how that would work. Okay. Uh, because, because, you know, like right now, if you're in the blockchain space, um, so with the exclusion of what I do at University of New Hampshire School of Law, because they have a blockchain cryptocurrency and law certification program, but everyone else who I think are great at their jobs, whether we're talking chain house or blockchain training alliance, um, they they self-certify. And so there, there's that space where it's like, well, you yeah, have bad crypto podcast wants to have a bad certification. We just really just need to figure what that looks like. Because you guys have all the content already because they're yeah, your you know what, I don't know if you want to put right. that on your LinkedIn. Though. I got a bad certificate. You know, it's really not so great. <laughs> Where did you go, bad you? <laughs> <laughs> hey, bad you might have its own esports team one day. So it, oh, uh, yes. It. Bad you. Yes, we're branching we're the bad out. University. I love we're, it. We're, we're the opposite of a good one. That's good. You're the baddest university. Stay bad. I, I love the tagline. That's great. So, hey, so you mentioned earlier there. Let's just let's just close the loop on Clearview AI. You said the Clearview AI is 
you can do some some crazy things with that maybe predatory what what does that even mean what, what's going on with that uh so if you go to clearview.ai it's just their mm-hmm. website they it seems like a normal enough ai facial recognition business um so they work with primarily with law enforcement agencies. Uh, it's not available to the consumers yet, but they can they are redefining what is public and what is mm-hmm. private. So I can find Travis's face somewhere on the internet. And so I can do a search. And from that search, I can find out your house address, where you work, and probably also where your mm-hmm. kids go to school. Because if your kids have ever been in a photo with you, I know everything about them too. And so that is all technically public domain information. Uh, However, when used for law enforcement purposes, they don't need a search warrant because, again, it's technically public information. And this is where we we had we discussed policies. Mm -hmm. So law enforcement uses this occasionally to help solve some hard crimes, right? Kidnappings, Amber Alerts, et cetera. Those are really good applications for it. Other times it's we're just going to collect your face your image wherever you are walking around in public. And so you've got cameras, you see cameras all throughout the stadium, on the way to the stadium, in the stadium. And so Clearview, it has a huge database. It's like uh, 10 times that of law enforcement that is looking for Travis and Joel or whoever's face it is because they want to connect the dots uh, for marketing purposes, but law enforcement uses it for law enforcement purposes. So right now in my book, that's just a warrantless search because of the amount of information that they're able to collect about you. So it's one of those ins- instances where this is like data sovereignty, where where does what control over the data do you have? What control over your data do you have, number one? And number two is, do you have a right to privacy in public? Um, And so we're going to see some, they've already blurred these lines quite a bit. There's an article on CNET uh, about uh, Clearview that articulates it out a little bit more. In general, I'm against these type of technologies, particularly with um, facial recognition. Uh, This gentleman named Brian Brackeen from Kairos, he's coming on to um, the UNH Law School uh, to guest lecture about government and facial recognition, because right now, the U.S. is on that is on the edge of we're about to be China in the sense of total surveillance uh, from the state. So I found that article here on CNET just from a couple days ago. Clearview app lets strangers find your name. Info with snap of a photo report says it may not be long before you'll have to forget about walking down the street anonymously in this New York Times report. Yikes. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes you just want to like uh, disappear, just go where no one's going to bother you or ask you questions, you know, or just have some form of privacy. Not even don't even think about privacy for you. Think about it for your kids. Do you want mm. a stranger to be able to take a photo of your kid mm-hmm. with their phone? Yeah, that's scary. And figure out where they live in the next 30 yeah. seconds. That's why I taught most of my kids. They are they are uh, second degree black belts in karate. <laughs> Clearview's uh, tagline should be "Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name because they want <laughs> everyone's name in that world. Everyone's name is Norm, um, right? So yeah, no, it's a it's a, it is a policy. This is a moment where we need to update our policies because it's not for if you just exclude adults. You got to look at the different app apps that like TikTok that kids use and even Snapchat that kids use to, you know, put different memes on their face. So they're collecting all the information for your children. We already have instances where people are trying to snatch kids off the street, like like physically trying to grab them off the street. And now you're giving the same stranger the capability of, I know exactly where that child lives. And so I'm against it. You know what? That that's another topic for another day. Let's let's have you back again, and next time you're back, let's talk about privacy, TikTok, Snapchat, and some of these other issues that you uh, you bring up here because you are just a wealth of information and opinion that is worth listening to. Thanks. I'm I'm actually going to give myself a shameless plug. I'm going to Dubai in March to their AI Everything conference, and I'm giving a presentation on. AI anger management, because most folks think that, hey, 
Skynet's going to occur and be angry at us and kill us all. I look at it from the sense of we're developing technology like facial recognition, where facial recognition in combination with AI, where the real moment of AI anger management is where parents say or realize the depth of information and data that these different applications are collecting on their children, and then they get angry. Because AI anger management isn't, machines don't get angry, tech doesn't get angry. Humans get angry how this technology is being used. And again, this is a really big policy conversation that we're just not having because everyone's like, hey, law enforcement, we can do this. But it's like, no, small children, your kids, my nieces and nephews, we need to think about the uh, world we're going to leave to them. So we definitely talk about privacy and data sovereignty. Well, I got a nice surprise for you, Samson. I'm going to be in Dubai for the same event. So we're going to get to hang out. Awesome, awesome, and awesome. Absolutely. Samson Williams is the man. Axesandeggs.com, his website. Follow him on the Twitters. Links to the articles to Samson's stuff in the show notes. And once again, Samson, you have demonstrated that you are truly bad. (laughs) Thank you, guys. Well, Travis... First of all, we want to give a shout out to our new show sponsor. This one extremely timely for all of you that have to pay taxes. Guess what? That's all of you. Zen Ledger is the company. They provide the best tax software for crypto investors. Here's the idea. Paying taxes is hard and they make it easy. So they help individual crypto investors and CPAs with their crypto accounting and tax returns. Crypto traders do a lot of trades across multiple exchanges. It becomes really difficult to do proper accounting and keep track of all your capital gains or capital losses. They help bring all the data together, make paying crypto taxes easy and seamless. And if you want 15% off of Zen Ledger's product, go to badco.in forward slash Zen Ledger, Z-E-N-L-E-D-G-E-R, badco.in forward slash Zen Ledger for 15% discount. The code that you're going to want to use is bad crypto 15 Just like that one word, bad crypto one five. Go check it out. Don't put your taxes off, gang. You want to know if you're getting a refund, hop on it. Yep, yep. And and so here we go. Mr. Samson Williams, you were incorrect with your thought about the 49ers. So him and I, I was giving a hard time. Like, no way, dude. The Chiefs are totally gonna win. And I part of me thought they would, part of me was realistic, as we said. But you might enjoy the beautiful Kansas City Chiefs hat that is on (laughs) Samson's head in this. So enjoy that. (laughs) That's right, gang. The next in a series of bad crypto podcasts, non-fungible collectible tokens is officially released. This is going to be token number three featuring Samson Williams. And wait till you get a load of this one, gang. It is only going to be available from the time this episode dropped until February 11th at midnight. Eastern Standard Time. There's an unlimited supply of them, but this is time gated. So if you don't claim it by midnight Eastern Standard Time on February 11th, you won't be able to claim it. Here's where you go to get it. Badco.in forward slash Samson. And Samson is spelled S-A-M-S-O-N. Badco.in forward slash Samson is where you go to claim it. Now, Mr. Travis Wright, I made a tutorial a little video. It's about three minutes long for those of you wondering how to create a non-fungible token ready wallet. That's up there for people to watch on the website. And um, you'll see the picture of the NFT you're going to receive. That's true. Very cool. We enjoy putting these together. These are fun. Again, always on the front edge, testing out technologies, experimenting with technologies. Mr. Joel Kahn is the functional futurist, and uh, I'm the fungible token guy. (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, I'm the guy who's going to make these things. We're, just, we're <laughs> both just, the guy who's got to send them out. So we're good. both just fun. No, we. So there's an automated system now. Yeah. Uh, we hired a coder off of Upwork, and we're working with our friend Patricio at the Poap app, which is a great way to um, to be able to view your tokens. You guys can go to Poap P O A P dot X Y Z, or just go to the app store of your choice, and download the app. It's a great, you know, it stands for Proof of Attendance Protocol, and within the constraints of that app, we're calling ours proof of listening protocol 
right? Because the only way you can get this token is if you've listened to the show, know where to go to claim it and do it within the 72 hour time range. Yeah. Most of the times you don't want a polyp, but with us, you get proof of listening protocol and you get non-fungible tokens if you have a polyp. But well, don't send us a picture of any polyps that you have. You know? Yeah, please don't. But <laughs> enjoy the token. It's our gift to you guys. And remember, we're going to be offering you bonuses and opportunities. Think of this as a loyalty program to bad crypto. And once you collect a certain number of tokens, we're going to be announcing how you can redeem those tokens. Not that you have to trade them in, just prove that you have them, proof of listening, and we're going to reward you further. So don't miss any of them. Mm -hmm. go, go grab your token. Catch you guys on the next episode of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Until then, Mr. Travis Wright, what should they do? Just be grateful that the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, 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 before we finish, actually, I want to issue a correction because in the last episode, I talked about the concert for Kampuchea, uh, which is to raise funds for the people of Cambodia, but it wasn't George Harrison. I had the wrong Beatle. It was Paul McCartney that was there uh -huh. and there's a dvd for this multi-hour concert and a queen was there the clash was there and what year Paul was mccartney this? uh this would have taken place in uh what year was it it happened in 1980 well that's when the concert dvd when the the movie came out okay. 1980 so shortly before that elvis costello uh the who were there and in several other bands it's called the concert for campuchia it's absolutely classic so i'm thinking of something else that uh that george harrison that probably was the concert for bangladesh you're yeah, right a concert for bangladesh. bangladesh bangladesh so just wanted to issue a correction there because i well add that song to the playlist then bangladesh there you and go whatever when everyone's in your head that you want to spew out uh, i don't have anything in my head spewing at the moment okay okay there's, there's no spewing. Check out the show notes for this episode. All the links at badco.in forward slash 367. Claim your token, your NFT at badco.in forward slash Samson and badco.in forward slash stay bad doesn't take you anywhere, but just. It does. It does not. Hey, oh, by the way, real quick, before we say stay bad. <laughs> before before we end the show for the third time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if you want to hear uh, any more thoughts about the Chiefs or the Super Bowl thing there, I actually have a podcast I put together with a good friend of mine for many years, and we chat about the Chiefs. So just type in the Kansas City Sportscast, and then uh, we'll be able to laugh about the Chiefs stuff. So go Chiefs. There you go. Stay go bad. Chiefs. Who's bad? The Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto, LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoin's and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.